I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail. Here's the rig I'll be using in this video. There's a 2-ounce Spro Bucktail and a Tsunami Hollow Teaser with a Gamagatsu bait holder hook, both tipped with gulp grubs. Uh, in this case, those are the 6-inch grubs, and I'm also using the 5-inch swimming mullets. I'm about 2.7 miles from shore out in the Atlantic off the south shore of Long Island uh, near an artificial reef. It is approximately 80 to 85 feet of water. So you can see I just missed a hit there. Just keep it jigging, just keep that thing moving and almost every time the fish is going to come back. Um, I have numerous underwater videos uh, showing fluke behavior and you'll see many times if they grab onto a bait they don't get the hook they just keep coming back over and over again so uh, I don't hesitate to set the hook um, as soon as I feel weight on the end of the line and uh, if I miss it really doesn't matter they're going to come back and uh, this one certainly did and it's a good one. I'm using the same basic tackle and techniques that I use inshore uh, the reel is the same quantum accuracy. I've beefed up just a couple of things. The line, I normally use 15 pound test braid. I'm using 20 here. And the rod is uh, a Tsunami that's rated for 15 to 25 pound test line. And the Tsunami rods I use inshore are usually, uh, those are 10 to 20 pound test line rated. And my rigs are tied with 25 pound test fluorocarbon. And you can see I'm also using a net that I could probably fit a body in, but uh, I decided I'd rather have too large a net out here than have one that's too small because there's some pretty uh, good size quality fluke that are caught on these grounds. And on my YouTube channel I have a video with detailed rigging instructions on how to tie this rig. So I need to pick really calm days to do this trip, uh, to come this far out in the ocean with the kayak. And uh, you know, clearly I've picked the beauty here. It's, uh, it's really flat. Actually, the, the biggest danger for, for coming out on the kayak is um, the other boats. Both their waves, uh, they can upend you because there's, there's bigger boats around. And just the fact that they might not see you. So you can't see it in the video, but behind me, I've got a rather tall flag. Actually, I have two flags on there. So uh, doing whatever I can to increase my visibility. So uh, sitting on a 15 foot yellow piece of plastic isn't enough because it's a low profile. You got to have some flags up so people can see that and um, you just have to keep your eyes open. Uh, sometimes these guys are running on autopilot and uh, they might not uh, see you. Okay so look at this. This is a beautiful sea bass, black sea bass. Um, yeah, that's, that's a real nice one, well over 20 inches, and, uh, and I'm happy to get that. These are very tasty fish, and I consider them a bycatch in this kind of fishing. I mean, I am targeting fluke. I am not trying to catch these, but uh, every trip that I make for fluke fishing this way, out on these grounds, uh, you know, I'm catching some decent sea bass. And this one's going to give me a little gift here. It's uh, handing me some fresh bait. I'm not even sure what those are. Um, they look like sardines. They're kind of unusual. And he's got a mouthful of them, and I just kind of can't resist to reach in there and grab a couple for bait. And uh, so I'm, I'm doing that. But in the end, I did put a couple on the hook, but they just disappear. Uh, it's hard to beat the gulp. So when I fish this deeper water, uh, I really make an effort to make sure I'm getting a very sharp bounce on the jig. Because you know, if you've got... You know, 85 feet of uh, water underneath you, you've, you've got quite a bit of line out and uh, get a little belly in the line and that's going to dampen the jigging action. And the other thing is the hook set. I mean I'm not going up and down much here because there's, there's very little wave action but uh, usually you've got a little bit of a swell and you're going up and down and uh, when you set the hook you not only have potential uh, belly in the line, you also have the fact that you know your craft may be going down while you're trying to set the hook and uh, so I you know I always set the hook hard and uh, I probably set it even a little harder out here. So I'm thinking I have a decent fluke here because I feel uh, the weight and I feel head shakes uh, but then what I see is a little bit of a pleasant surprise. 
I've got a decent sea bass on the dropper uh, on the Tsunami Hollow Teaser, and I've got a keeper fluke on the Spro Bucktail. So uh, I've got a keeper of each right there. That is a net full of very good eating. That's an excellent meal right there. So uh, I'm real happy with that catch. Part of the key to this kind of fishing is to use as light a weight jig as possible, and I'm using two ounces, I'm still able to get away with that, and that's about as light as I'm going to be able to use in 85 feet of water, especially with uh, two rather large gulp grubs on there, and you know, they add resistance and take a little bit of lead to keep them down. Um, but so far with this little breeze, uh, I'm okay, and I'm able to uh, stay down with the two ounces. It's also crucial that you use thin braided line for this kind of light tackle jigging. And I'm using 20 pound test braid here and I definitely would not go heavier than that. Oh, some luck there. Uh, he had the spro in his mouth and shook off right at the net. Uh, so, landed in the net just in time. It's a nice fish. So you can see the breezes picked up just slightly and uh, when I set the hook on this fish and start cranking, you're going to notice that I've got a little bit of line out, a little bit of an angle. So, um, you know, I'm starting to scope out a little bit. As it turns out, this is the last drift that I'll do with the two ounce, and then I'll, I'll go up to a three. Um, you know, the other thing I can do is put out a drift control sock, but um, certainly I don't mind going up to three ounces or four ounces and really don't want to use the drift sock unless I have to, but um, that's a very effective means of controlling your drift speed. So besides the fish I showed on the video, there were um, a fair number of smallish keepers, like 18 to 19 inches, and some shorts, uh, around 17 inches or so, and uh, also some sea bass. And not too much in the way of interference fish, just a few sea robins, maybe one skate. So uh, overall good action and some nice fish. And there's a picture of the kayak that a friend of mine snapped from his boat. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel.